Good morning, or good evening, or whatever time of day you're watching this video. We're going to move on with chapter 8, Quadratic Expressions and Equations. So, in the previous chapter we learned all about exponent rules, and so in this chapter we're going to focus on um, basically uh, things with x squared in them, although there's a kind of wider variety, but that's the, the main focus of quadratics. So first, section 8.1, how do you add and subtract polynomials? So this is something that should be review, um, and it's also kind of common sense, but we'll go through it rather quickly and then do some examples. So first vocabulary word, what is a polynomial? Polynomial is a sum of monomials, and each term is called, or sorry, each monomial in the polynomial is called a term, okay? <laughs> we learned previously what a monomial is. That's a combination of numbers and variables uh, multiplied or divided, that has no variables in the denominator and no negative exponents. So the degree of a monomial is the sum of all the exponents of the variable. So for example, 3x squared has a degree of 2, uh, but 3x squared y to the fourth has a degree of 6 because the combined exponent of all the variables uh, is 6. Okay, so for a monomial, you just look at the combined exponent of the variables. Then the degree of a polynomial is the highest degree of all the monomials that make it up. Okay, so if you had a whole bunch of monomials added together, you just find whichever one has the highest degree, and that's the overall degree of the polynomial. <coughs> and the reason that the degree matters, you might be thinking this is kind of stupid, right? The reason that the degree matters is because when you want to write a polynomial in standard form, so standard form, just like we had standard form of a line, standard form of a polynomial is to put the terms in order from highest degree to lowest degree. And anytime there's a tie, then you want to use alphabetical order. So I'll give you just a quick example here. You might do like 3x squared plus 2y squared plus x minus 3y plus 2. Okay, so why is this in standard form? The first two terms both have a degree of 2, then the next two terms both have a degree of 1, and this has a degree of 0 because there's no exponents at all. And then within these two terms, which both have a degree 2, they're in alphabetical order. x comes before y, and then again x comes before y, and then just numbers at the end. So a standard form is to put them from highest to lowest powers, uh, including all variables. And then the leading coefficient of a standard form polynomial is the number in the very, very front. Leading because it's in the front, coefficient because it's the number. So <coughs> these are just some variable or ver vocabulary, sorry, to be aware of that when we're talking about polynomials, if I say what's the leading coefficient, um, or if I say what's the degree of this polynomial, or put it in standard form, things like that, um, it's helpful. Okay, problem solving tips. Now this is focused specifically on adding and subtracting. You can only add or subtract terms which have exact matches for variables and exponents, and these are called like terms. Okay, it, this is, I can't stress this importance enough. An exact match for both variables and exponents. Okay, those are called like terms. Now if you have like terms, when you're adding and subtracting them, the coefficient, which is basically telling you how many you have, is the part that you add or subtract, and you always leave the variables the same when adding or subtracting. Okay, The way that you can remember this, and this one seems juvenile, but this is actually the best way to not make a mistake, is think about adding different types of fruit. Okay, If you have five apples and you try to add five bananas, you, you still have five apples and five bananas. You can't combine them together to get ten of something. Um, and likewise, if you have five apples and you add uh, three apples, five apples and three apples, you get exactly eight apples, but the fact of the matter is they're still apples. So when you add or subtract, whatever they are stays the same. It's only when you multiply and divide that the exponents or variables will change. Let's do some examples. I'll try to spread these out. We'll do 1, 4, 11, uh, 16, 17, and 20. Those are the ones that we're going to do in this video. So find each sum or difference. Okay, we're adding and subtracting, so we're going to find like terms. This is all adding, all adding, all adding, all adding. Because we're adding everything, the parentheses don't actually matter, right? Adding here and adding here are all the same in terms of PEMDAS. So we have a 2x plus a 4x. That gives us a 6x. Then we have a 3y plus a 9y. That gives us a positive 12y. So we just add the pieces together that are alike. Okay, next one here, 11m minus 2m 
11 minus 2 equals 9, 9 what? 9m. Then we have a negative 7 minus 6. Negative 7 minus 6 is negative 13. And what is it that we're adding or subtracting? n. Okay, so when you have stuff in parentheses, it's absolutely key that whatever minus sign or plus sign is here, you're aware that everything coming after it is either subtracted or is added. And beyond that, you just combine like terms. And you notice how as I did these problems, I underlined the pieces that I was using and then I circled the pieces that I was using. That's really helpful because it helps you not leave anything off. So underline or circle or cross out the terms as you go. Okay, next question. Determine whether each expression is a polynomial. If it is, find the degree and say whether it's mono, binomial, or trinomial. So the first one, is it a polynomial? The first term is a monomial. The second term is a monomial. And the sum of monomials is a polynomial. So this one is yes. And because it has two terms, it'll be a binomial. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. 16 down here. <clears throat> so we have how many terms here? The first term is a monomial, yeah, because it has no negative exponents and it's a product. The next term is also a monomial. <clears throat> now these two terms should be combined together. 9 minus 3 is just 6. So really, that's one term once you simplify it. And so each of these terms is definitely a monomial. So the sum of them is a polynomial. So the answer is yes. And it's a trinomial because there are three terms. Now, <clears throat> a good question is, monomial, binomial, trinomial, you, have, you can't determine how many pieces are in it until you simplify it. So at first it looked like there was four things, but when you simplify it, you see there's only three, so it's a trinomial. Uh, let's look at this one real quick. This one, <clears throat> we look at the first term. Yes, that's a monomial. Look at the second term. No, it's not a monomial, and therefore overall this is not a polynomial because of this negative exponent right here. So we cannot have a negative exponent in a monomial or a polynomial. We'll learn about these later. They're uh, called rational functions. Okay, last thing here. Write each polynomial in standard form and identify the leading coefficient. So remember, standard form is alphabetical order with um, powers highest to lowest, which is called the degree. So this term has a degree 1. This term has a degree 0, because there's no exponents. This one has a degree 2. Okay, so we go 2x squared plus 3 x plus 1, and the leading coefficient is a 2. How about over here? Okay, this is our highest power, 3x cubed. Next one is negative x squared, then 4x, uh, positive 4x, and then negative 3. Leading coefficient is 3, the number in front. So I'm sorry that these examples didn't have multiple variables, but remember the degree of the polynomial or the degree of the term within the polynomial is the total sum of all the exponents of all the variables. So if you have more than one variable, obviously add them all together. Um, but so adding and subtracting, that's basically all there is to it. Find like terms, make sure that they exactly match both variables and exponents have to match perfectly. Uh, and if they do, then you can uh, combine the coefficients. All right, that's it for this video.